Hi, I'm Mark with DIY Ready, and today we're going to build a rocket can heater. For instructions to this and other projects and the material list, please visit DIYready.com. Let's go ahead and get started. So, we're going to start off with our tools, and safety is first. So, because we're going to be working with sharp metal, we're going to be using gloves. The thicker the glove, the better. Leather is better. So, I'm going to put my gloves on. We're not going to be using any power tools today. So there's no need for earplugs or eyeglasses. Now, our second tool is a pair of metal snips. These are my favorite pair that are a little old and rusty. Then we're going to use a X-Acto knife or a, a disposable blade knife or a knife that's been beat up pretty bad because it's going to destroy the edge on it. And a pair of pliers. I'm using vice grips and a tape measure. Our materials are a couple of cans. Uh, I'm using uh, unused paint cans. They were just easily accessible to me. You could be using large food cans or uh, any type of can structure. I'm going to show you the basic outline of exactly how to build it. We're going to need two of them because we're going to build a tall one. And a piece of aluminum flashing. Now, word of caution, we don't want to be using any galvanized materials in this. When you heat up galvanized uh, metal, it produces a toxic gas that is very, very dangerous. So do not use anything with galvanizing. And you obviously want to pay attention to what's been in your cans. So if you have to burn a little uh, paint off, uh, that this is manufactured paint, uh, that's going to be something that you're going to have to make sure that you do outside and get plenty of ventilation. Uh, with food grade cans, they're all lined with plastic and plastic will burn off too. So that's going to be a little toxic also. Just be aware of these things. Uh, once it's burned off, it's safe. Our first step is to cut our first piece of flashing to make the air vent and the wood feed in the front of the can. So we're going to go ahead and roll over a piece of flashing like that get a mark on it so we know where to cut. I'm going to give it a little extra right there. Use my metal snips. Cut right through. Once we have our piece of metal cut, then we're going to form it. Now, I make space for fuel. I'm just going to bend this on the table. I make space for fuel to be separated from the airflow. So we're going to do a triangle shape on this one. All right, so I need a pen to mark out my tool or where I'm going to cut here. So go like this and like that. Little mark like that. Now, a lot of people have a misconception about how to cut cans. You don't want to drill holes or use a pair of snippers if you don't have to, when a simple knife will do the job just fine. All you're going to do is press into it like that. Step over just a little bit, like that. As the knife sinks in, see I'm, I'm starting about a quarter of an inch. As the knife sinks in, the blade has a bevel on it and cuts backwards a little bit. So let's go through. And you can cut pretty much any thin metal with a knife like this. Now, if you need to go back and cut your little seams where you missed, okay, and one little last one at the top, and we're through. Now, I'm gonna squish this down at the edge. This is what 
your pliers are for. You don't want to stick your hand on this metal too much. It's very, 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 very sharp. Now the goal here is you don't want to make the hole too big. You just want to make it big enough that your flashing fits in it. Okay. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and cut some length off this flashing. I got it a little bit too long. How about right there? All right, so what you want is about six to eight inches of feed in the front and just a little bit of feed into the inside of the can. Once you have your shape, you can then bend your, your can a little bit back into place around your flashing or your other piece of can, whatever you're using, to get a better seal. Now, a little leak here is no big deal. Okay, so what we're going to do next is we're going to divide our feed on the inside of this. So we're going to take our little excess piece here or cut off another piece and we're going to make a feed divider. What I mean by a feed divider is we want to have our airflow separated from where our burn material or wood feeds in. So that way you're not choking off the air supply with your, with your uh, wood that you're feeding into it. Slide that in, just like that. The goal here is you're going to feed your wood on the top here and air will pass through the bottom. What this does is it enables the air to come in underneath the wood and causes a better venturi effect or spiral. Gets more rockety that way. Okay, so next thing we're gonna do is we're going to build our stand. The stand is the part that comes up here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have our cans standing like this. We're going to have our pipe that we're going to form out of the flashing stand from the center all the way to the top. But what we want to do is we want to make sure that we give enough space that you can still cook something on top. So you can set a pan on top of here. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to measure from the outside up. And I'm going to give it about an inch to the top. So let's call that 14 inches. Come over here, mark our material at 14 inches. Cut another piece here. So you might question, why so tall? Well, with rocket heaters, the goal is 100% combustion. Uh, that creates a much higher heat uh, and no smoke. So to get 100% combustion, you need a very tall stand compared to your intake. So the longer your intake, the longer the stand needs to be. So uh, what we're gonna do is We're going to roll this at the rough size of what we want to cut our hole. So one of the reasons I like paint cans, or any food can will actually have this too, is you have the ribbing here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my hole the size of this second ribbing so that my stand will fit right there. So again, we're just going to use the knife, cut it in like this, 
all the way around. All right, cut our hole in the bottom. Now this nifty little piece of, of uh, metal. Now, the first thing that's gonna degrade in this can is gonna be, or in your rocket heater, is going to be the bottom of the can. So any extra metal that you have, throw it in the bottom so that it doesn't r rust out. It'll protect it. Because that's where your coals are gonna be, it's gonna get really hot right there. So, now, we have a hole. Oh, we're going the long way. There we go. Okay. So, we just fit our piece of flashing in there. Make sure it's about an inch from the top. Work it down a little ways. What we're gonna do is we're gonna see how it fits to the bottom part. We're gonna make another cut here. So, since we cut a triangle here, you could do a square or a round or whatever you felt like, uh, I'm just going to cut a V in the bottom of this so that it fits over the top of that, of the intake, right there. Again, not rocket science, we're just cutting it to fit. So there we are. Fits over the feed, comes up about an inch to the top. Now I'm going to, we have two lids. We're going to keep one lid to close this up when you're done with it, but the other lid we're going to hammer back on here after we cut a hole through it. Let's mark our I'm actually going to put it back on the can so it holds it better, so I don't cut myself. There we go. All right. Pop that on there. What it does is it gives rigidity or some a rigid surface for this to hold on to once it's fed through. And there we go. So the next step is cutting vent holes in the top bucket or a can so that you can cook on the top of this. So we're going to pull that off and let's just go ahead and mark some vent holes on here every couple of inches. All right. Now this has a seam and a lot of cans have a seam. I'm not going to cut that seam. That's a structural integrity part of this can. And if a can has ribbing, you try not to cut the ribbing because that's also a structural integrity part of the can. You don't want your thing falling apart when you're done with it. So what I've done is I've just drawn some squares on here for a guide. And I'm gonna cut them out with my knife. Once you've cut a square, spin that tab up so they have a little hole.
All right, so now we have our vent holes all the way around. What this enables you to do is now cook on this. I'm Mark with DIY Ready, and if you like projects like this, remember you can visit DIYready.com for the instructions to this can stove and many other projects. Have a great day.